Welcome back to another one. So today we are building the Tiger Glide hub, as you can see in there. Now this is coming out of a 717 Mavic rim. Nothing wrong with the rim, but it's having an upgrade. But you can see, ooh, at some point, whoever owned this hub before, obviously didn't have the gear set up right and was dropping the chain off the sprocket so um i'm gonna get this hub out the wheel i'll give that a good clean up spruce up that hub clean out all that crap so it looks clean and sparkling fresh and then what we'll do is i will lace it in to the lovely gray one um with this wheel build, what I'm going to do is not concentrate on so much the lacing, but concentrate on tensioning up a wheel after building, dishing, and getting that perfect. So let's uh, crack on with this. Uh, I'll I'll get that out. I'll clean it all up because I don't want to bore you to death. I'll do a speed run of lacing, which will be a minute or two, and then I'll go through tensioning of the wheel. So that's the uh, hub all dismantled. Polished all up, cleaned it all up, not looking too bad on the non-drive side. Um, obviously cleaned up all of the uh, bits. Obviously there is a few markings on there as you can see. Um, but again, I do like what I did with the last one. So, right, I'll do a speed run through on lacing this and then we will crack on with the main part of what this video is going to be about. And that's basically tensioning the wheel up and stress testing and dishing and a few bits like that. So let's crack on. Right, so what I've just done is I've just gone around and taken all the nipples all the way down to the last thread on all the way around the whole wheel. Um, that's looking a lot more cleaner. Obviously the spokes are still, even at the last thread you'll find that they're still a bit loose and you'll be able to have a slight little bit of, slightest little bit of movement in that wheel. Obviously if that hub, after you get down to the last um, Fred, if that was like dum 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 dum, then you spoke to too big. Um, 
but yeah, that all went to well. That all went together perfect. Um, got the big hole where the valve is, so you've got your big gap there as well. So now what we'll do is we'll start tensioning this up and get it in the truant stand and go from there. So I've got you the best view possible. So that's not too bad. That's obviously with all the spokes still super loose. So we should be able to pull that in and get that running. Absolutely lovely on that. So you can see there, it's a bit closer to the uh, non-drive than it is the drive. So we're going to start by finding the valve. So there's the valve. So I'm just going to do one full turn on all the drive side spokes. As you can see, as I'm going round, I'm also feeling <clears throat> the tension as well. Because after you've done it for a while, you will be able to gauge by the feel whether or not if you like this one is very loose, even though it's down to that last thread. So I'll give it an extra half a turn just to nip that one up just a little bit. So it's a bit all over, but when you take that in, you can still see you've got a slight little bit of a gap there, but not on that, but a slight one on that side. So what I'll do is start the valve again, and I'll do one more turn on the drive side, just to centre that wheel before I put one turn on the non-drive side, and then we'll start pulling this wheel generally into shape and then working on the up and down as well as the left to right. And you can see some of them like just there, I gave that one a turn and a half and that one half a turn because I can feel the tension as I'm working on that area. Just trying to balance that tension before we go into obviously the finer details. So you can see that's not far off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do start the valve again, and then I'm going to do a full turn on the non-drive. That one's a bit loose, so I'm giving that one just a smidge more. That one a bit less because I can feel it. Same with that one. And that one's a slight bit loose as well. So. Right, so that's not too bad. Now I don't want to go too crazy with this because as you can see there, it's quite central now in there. We have got a bit of wave, so we are going to just correct that ever so slightly on the wheel. So we'll look, see where it's pulling over. And you can see that it's just a little bit looser there. So we'll just nip up just that area, just a little bit, just to bring that in line, just a smidge. And then we can correct the wheel as we go around. I do actually um, put, um, as I get it gets a bit more closer to being finished, I do actually put a bit of PVC tape just on them. Because <clears throat> I don't know where my uh, little rubber caps are at the moment. 
So I'll give them just a quick tune up there. See what you've got to remember the wheel is still not, there's still a lot of loose spokes on that. So I'm just correcting it ever so slightly before we start getting up to full tension or well even remotely close to tension should I say and always bearing in mind that obviously any small adjustments will affect it overall as well And it's a case of just taking your time with it. And as you can see, I'm at the stage now where that one was a little bit looser. So I just did it just a slight little bit more of a tune on that one. We're not slightly, we're not at the stage yet where we want to do a stress, um, stress the wheel, like stress check and so on. We're just aiming and just correcting that trueness just ever so slightly and as you can see the spokes are still not fully up to tension but all we've done now is just correct it that ever so slightly just so then when we start doing the stressing and the final checks it makes it just that little bit easier so What you'll do now is you can use your tension checker um, that just goes um, in between the spokes on there spoke goes in between there and then that will give you the reading of the actual tension of the wheel as well and So on the actual chart itself, so we have a steel round 1.8 J bend. So we're looking 51 to 174. Um, then you've got your chart down there um, because that them numbers refer to kilogram of force. Um, new, uh, so basically it's like one kilogram of force equals 10 newtons. So that'll be your newtons and that'll be your kilogram of force. So 1.8, so 51 would be 12. So we're looking 12 is the lowest and 174 and 24 as the highest um, on that chart for that, there for the 1.8 steel rounded spoke. So that's where we then use this. <coughs> and we can basically check the tension and as you can see there we're still only down to like 11 10 and you can check all the way around that one's a little bit higher and this is where you want to spend just that little bit of time kind of balancing your actual spokes off <coughs> so That's what we'll do now. So what I'll do is because they are still quite low and they still are kind of, I'm now gonna put a half a turn on the drive, half a turn on the non-drive, and then we should be just about ready for the first stress check. So start at the valve, just so you know you can finish at the valve. Then half a turn on the non-drive. Oh, that one's a little bit low, so I'm gonna give that one just an extra tiny little bit of a turn. And as you can see, as I'm going round, I'm feeling that tension in those spokes as well.
so that's not too bad that's not far off at all so what i'll do now is i'll just give a quick stress check on the wheel so slightly stressing the wheel what you want to do is have it on the floor now you don't want to put every bit of your weight down especially if you're a bit of a bigger guy i'm only like 11 stone 11 and a half stone so all i do is literally just go down and just gently push on the rim sometimes you might hear some creaking flip it over that'll just help see any spokes and then i like to give the spokes just a little bit of a squeeze as well like that and what i'll do is i'll generally do that probably 10 15 times throughout the stressing uh truing process because as i get closer to getting this all built up um i'll make those adjustments ever so slightly smaller um as i'm taking obviously truing it up and then i'll keep checking it keep checking it keep checking those tensions keep checking the addition um and then go from there so let's get back in the wheel stand and see where we are with it now so we've just stress checked it that's back in so let's see where we are with it so, all right so that is looking pretty all right so i know my truing stand's pretty straight anyway because i do regularly check the actual um to make sure it is in alignment um but that is not looking too bad so I think I'm going to go ahead at this stage before I start doing all those minor tweaks and going and finishing, obviously going round and so on, is just do a quick um, dishin uh, check on there. So let's do that. Well, I would say the longer you spend on a wheel doing those kind of stress checks and making sure it's all spot on and good, obviously the better outcome the wheel is going to be overall and a stronger wheel. Um, so just check the addition on that side. Oh, it's probably less than half a mil, so that's well within uh, tolerance. Um, so what I'll do now is get this back in the truing stand and just keep doing that same process. Like, because I now I know it's pretty much dished within half a mil. As long as I keep within that half a mil on one of the little pins on the actual uh, well pincers. On the truing stand just keep like stress checking it and then tweaking it um, and then giving it a check with obviously um, the tensioner and then making sure that obviously you've kind of got a good balance across that wheel um, and just spend, just generally spend your time so i will keep persevering i'll give you a quick kind of see how close we are let me flip it, we'll, we'll see how close we are. Right, all in all, if I try and get a super close image, let's have a look, see if I can get it to focus. There we are. Let's see where we are. So we are super close to getting that. Uh, tinker with that just a little bit more and then go from there so all in all thank you for watching if you've tuned in today and if you've got any questions just drop it down in the comments i'll keep tweaking this probably spend another half an hour or so on this just Ever so slightly tweaking it and then literally just doing my new adjustments now and then stress checking it and then keep checking that tension so yeah thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one next video we're going to get in these wheels and the service forks and we're going to do some upgrades on the specialized so have a good evening all